Kate Brundage from the National Board of Public Health Examiners and the officer panel. The Certified in Public Health Credential webinar will be focusing on the process and requirements needed to obtain the credential as well as the benefits. This presentation will also include an officer panel featuring two USPHS officers that are CPH certified. They will discuss the value that the CPH credential has brought to them. At the end of the day, officers will gain an understanding of how the certification aligns with fulfilling the 20% promotion precept on education and training. Ms. Kate Brundage is a certified certification program manager for the National Board of Public Health Examiners. Ms. Brundage has seven years of credentialing specific experience with a background in nonprofit management and has earned her bachelor's degree in English from George Mason University. Her training includes ANSI accreditation, process improvement, customer service, test development, recertification and promotion. Ms. Brundage also sits on the Senior Advisory Council to the Assessment Education Research Experts and as a member of the Certification Network Group. Lieutenant Commander Tala Hufan currently serves as a Senior Emergency Management Specialist in the Division of Unaccompanied Children Planning and Logistics within the Administration for Children and Families, Office of Refugee Resettlement. Lieutenant Commander Hubon has over 10 years of experience in public health. She is a graduate from the George Washington University, where she completed her MPH in maternal and child health. Lieutenant Commander Hubon also holds both a CPH and MCHAS certification. Lieutenant Commander Kazuhiro Okumura is an environmental health officer currently stationed as an inter international policy analyst at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition International Affairs staff and works on bilateral policy development for food and cosmetic safety issues. After joining the Commission Corps, he spent time at the National Institutes of Health, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food Safety and Inspection Service, and was also stationed with FDA on the U.S.-Mexico border as an import investigator, performing investigations in FDA-regulated commodities. Three years ago, he deployed to Liberia as part of the U.S. government response to the Ebola outbreak in the West. So, Kate, you may begin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Annette. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, happy National Public Health Week. My name is Kate Brundage, and I'm the Certification Program Manager for the National Board of Public Health Examiners. Um, today, we'll be discussing the Certified in Public Health Credential. So, um, just quickly, we are going to go over the MBPHE and the CPH, uh, why the CPH, the certification process, what is on the exam, registering for the exam, study resources, discounts, and CPH recertification. So the MBPHE and the CPH uh, credential, the CPH is not just an exam, it's a credential, which means it has a governing board of directors, has eligibility requirements, an entrance exam, a recertification process every two years, and a code of ethics which all CPH must adhere to. The CPH exam acts as a standard benchmark to measure an individual's grasp of contemporary public health topics. Um, so ASPPH, the Membership Association for Schools and Programs of Public Health, along with the APHA, the Membership Association for the Public Health Individual, um, they both joined forces after a call came out from the U.S. Surgeon General Office in 1980 to form uh, a task force to uh, create a credentialing program for public health workers. Um, ASPPH's executive committee developed, approved and uh, developed an independent board of public health um, to issue examinations and provide those who pass the exam with a credential in public health. The MBPHE was established in 2008, and the first CPH exam was administered in 2008. 
The MEPHE Board of Directors is comprised of six executive committee members, 13 members, uh, members at large, two honorary members, and two staff members. The following logos are some of the organizations that employ MBPHE board members. These member organizations support the efforts of the MBPHE and credentialing of public health professionals. They do this by spreading the word of the growing credential and by providing meaningful continuing education opportunities for the community of CPH professionals. Uh, since 2008, the MBPHE has credentialed over uh, 5,600 CPH professionals. There are about 500 provisional CPHs at any given time. There are 2,000 applicants in the pipeline at any given time. We have 10 schools and programs that require the CPH for graduation. We have 13 schools and programs who offer a discount for the CPH exam. And we have six organizations that strongly encourage um, their membership or personnel to sit for the CPH exam, um, and they all uh, offer a discount as well. The MBPHE is a proud member of the Institute for Credentialing Excellence since 2014, um, and we have plans to apply for the NCCA accreditation program, which um, would prove that MBPHE has met and can maintain professional standards and excellence uh, with all of our processes, um, ethics, governance, test development, security, and making sure we have proper protocols and policies in place. So why the CPH? The CPH is the only credential of its kind for public health that demonstrates not only your knowledge of uh, key public health sciences, but also your commitment to the field through continuing education focused on emerged and established public health issues. The number one vision of the, of the MBPHE is to professionalize the field of public health and raise the visibility of the field itself. We strive to do this by administering the only public health examination that encompasses all core and cross-cutting areas of public health. We want to create an elite community of certified graduates, working professionals, faculty, leaders, and pioneers in public health. The vision also includes having a core standard body of knowledge for public health professionals, and lastly, to, continue, um, to promote continuing education and lifelong learning. So there are many reasons to get certified. Um, public The CPH provides mastery of core sciences um, and knowledge. There's also uh, potential salary increases and in promotions. And lastly, uh, the CPH assures the community that which you serve and protect that you've met and maintain a national professional standard. So I want to read a few testimonials before we get into the eligibility and the exam. This is Tanya Smith. She's a CPH from the United States Public Health Service. She was a member of our um, pilot cohort. And she says, though I don't hold an MPH, I bring many years of invaluable real-world public health experience to the table. I reviewed the ASPPH CPH study guide as well as the other study resources. Three months later, I successfully passed the first exam to be offered to candidates, candidates based solely on my prior work experience. It has been one of my proudest professional accomplishments. This is Laura Bacardo. She's from the Army Nurse Corps. Um, and she says that once I received my passing notice of the CPH exam, I received an 80,000 incentive bonus offered at that time in four increments and have continued to proudly serve my commission. This is um, Patrick Har Harper of the United States Public Health Service. And he says that my CPH affirms that I possess the means to positively change lives, and it motivates me to do to remain dedicated to doing just that. I accept this challenge proudly in honor of my fellow CPH certified colleagues, my branch of service, and most importantly, the nation whose health I have sworn to protect, promote, and advance. Um, so a question that we hear a lot is, I have my MPH, so why do I need my CPH? Um, we have 10 schools and programs that are now requiring you to pass the CPH exam to earn your MPH. So students and alumni will not earn their MPH without achieving CPH certification first. 
This tells us that the CTH exam tests knowledge and competency that graduate level students and alumni should know to graduate with an MPH to work in public health. The CTH should be your next stop after earning the MPH in achieving a leadership role in public health. The CPH exam may be the culminating exam for CEP accredited schools and programs of public health to graduate with your, with your MPH someday. So it's important to recognize that they go hand in hand. Employers are also using the CPH as a hiring tool. You want to distinguish yourself from thousands of resumes that simply say MPH by adding the CPH. The CPH says that you are willing to take time out of your busy schedule to take the next step in your career, show that you're dedicated and serious about the field of public health outshine your competitors in the profession, prove that you have mastered all core and cross-cutting areas of key contemporary public health sciences, go above and beyond your education, prepare and sit for a voluntary exam, probably on your weekend off, and maintain the CPH credential with continuing education. Do employers care about the CPH? This is Diane Matsuzaki, and she says, as a public health administrator in both local and state health departments, I often was responsible for hiring decisions. I found a great deal of variability in the form and content of graduate degrees in public health. The CPH is a credential recognizable by employers, providing assurance that an applicant possesses a solid knowledge base in core public health content areas routinely used in practice in health departments. So what do these organizations have in common? They want all their employees or membership to earn the CPH. Why is this important to me? Since we opened our eligibility to individuals currently working in the public health field, we have seen the CPH credential is populating the public health workforce. More employers are acknowledging the credential and offering to pay or reimburse for the exam and for recertification fees. More employers are offering salaries or promotions to those who earn the credential. Some organizations are offering a discount for the CPH exam and, and studying, free study materials for their entire department, staff, or membership to sit for the exam. Other organizations are setting up learning courses to prepare their employees for the exam. Some CEP accredited schools and programs are putting a requirement to pass the CPH exam to graduate with your MPH. Other CEP accredited schools and programs are offering a discount for the CPH exam and free study materials to their students and alumni who have significant CPH participation. We are also seeing a trend of employers putting a preference or a requirement for the CPH to work in public health in their job postings online. So this is ASCPH's publichealthjobs.org. Uh, you may have seen it before. It's our um, job board website for ASCPH. Um, and the reason why I wanted to tell you about it is because um, we did an analysis and all of these organizations listed here um, are requiring or preferring the CPH to work in public health. Okay, so the CPH process. The CPH process, um, first you need to determine your eligibility. So um, these accredited uh, students and alumni of public health uh, institutions are eligible along with individuals that have five years of public health working experience at a minimum plus um, plus a bachelor's degree in any concentration. And then we have a hybrid. Um, there's 200 questions, multiple choice, 12 domain areas, and after you sit for the exam, you will, um, you will maintain the credential with recertification. So all graduates of CEF accredited schools and programs of public health are eligible to sit for the exam. All students, graduate students, who have completed or are enrolled in the core coursework of biostatistics, epidemiology, environmental health, health policy, and management and behavioral sciences. And here is our new public health work experience. Um, this is for individuals that have a minimum of five years of public health work experience. Um, and the work experience needs to align with um, one of the 10 CDC's uh, essential public health services. We also have a hybrid, which is called Other Relevant Degree. It's individuals who have taken the core courses um, at a CEP accredited school or program of public health um, and then obtained a relevant public health related graduate degree or has taken the core courses and has obtained three years of public health work experience verified by references um, and transcripts. 
The CPH exam um, is um, a timed exam. You have four hours to take the exam. There's 200 questions, multiple choice, and the topic areas are general principles, core areas, and cross-cutting. The general principles, there are 25 items, core, core areas, there are 30 items in biostatistics, 30 items in epidemiology, 30 items in environmental health sciences, 30 for health policy and management, and 30 in behavioral and social sciences. Then lastly, there are 25 items for the cross-cutting area, which is communication and informatics, diversity and culture, leadership, professionalism, program planning, public health biology, and systems thinking. So again, it's a timed exam, 200 questions, four hours to take it. You can't bring a calculator or scratch paper. Um, however, I have been told that there, there aren't calculations. You just need to recognize formulas. Um, for the math portion. Um, we have two ways to sit for the exam. We have computer-based and paper-based. Um, the computer-based exam is held the entire month of February, the entire month of June, and the entire month of October. Um, you can sit for the exam Monday through Sunday, um, and there's uh, about 200 plus testing facilities um, around the world. So what you would do is go to our website, key in your zip code, find a testing facility near you, register for our exam, and on that day, go to that testing facility and sit for the exam. We also offer paper and pencil exams, um, and those can be um, set up at request. We just need 90 day lead time. So the computer-based exams, um, you would go to a testing location near your home, and computer-based exams um, have instant scoring. So when you hit submit on that exam, you're going to get your score. Um, you have to register or reschedule 72 hours beforehand. Now this is different because the paper-based exam, you have to register 30 days in advance, and it doesn't include instant scoring. So after you sit for a paper-based exam, all of the test booklets are sent back to our testing vendor who then um, scores the exam, um, and then the results are sent out three to four weeks after the administration. Candidates that pass the exam will receive a percentage that they passed, um, and then those who do not pass the exam will receive a scaled scoring. So they will see which area they didn't perform well in, and that way they will um, know which areas to study next time. The CPH exam is scored um, for it. Uh, every question on the exam is scored for its performance, discrimination, and difficulty. We have a content-based analysis that determines the minimum passing standard required to achieve certification. Our exam is handled on a pass-fail basis, and um, individuals that sit for the exam on their first time, about 75% pass on their first time. We have a um, test development committee that handles all of our um, all of our test development needs, and it starts with our uh, an analysis of our item bank. We also train volunteers to um, write um, items for the item bank, and then we have an item review committee as well as a form review committee that um, reviews ever everything before the exam and the questions in the form are put together. Um, there's a post-test analysis, and then the passing score is set. So registering for the CPH exam. This is our website. You want to go to our website and go to Get Certified. If you hover over Get Certified, a drop-down will appear, and the one you want to select is Register Now. So Register Now. This is what it would look like. Now, if you're if you're going to apply as a student, or I'm sorry, as an alumni of a CEPA accredited school or program of public health, you'll click that left, that bucket on the left. Um, if you're just using public health work experience, you want to use the bucket on the in the middle, and then the other relevant degree or a hybrid is on the right. Um, I'm going to quickly go through how to register as a student, because um, student alumni, because I believe most of you will be qualifying with public health work experience. Um, so. Student and alumni, if anyone here graduated from a CEPA accredited school or program of public health and wants to qualify as an alumni, you would click on that button, student and alumni, on the left side of the screen, and it would take you to our vendor's website, PSI. Um, you would create an account online. Uh, your school would log in and verify that you did graduate from that university. And then you would be sent an email to schedule your exam, pay online, um, and then you would just prepare for the exam and sit for it. 
There are discounts available in our system. We also have vouchers for students. Um, so that is kind of how the students and alumni will register. Um, new public health work experience. You're going to select that button in the middle. And um, you're going to, it'll take you to our application, our online application. You'll fill out your public health work experience into the online application. You'll upload your transcript and resume. You'll pay online. And discounts are available for United States Public Health Service, um, Commission Officers Association. Um, but you'll pay full price at the beginning. And then when you sit for the exam, we will mail you a reimbursement check for the difference. Your application will be reviewed. If you're approved, PSI, our testing vendor, will contact you to schedule your exam. If you're not approved, you'll be refunded in full. And this is our um, hybrid um, eligibility. So you would just click that right button on the uh, right-hand side for register now, and you would fill out our Word application and submit it to info at mdphe.org. If you register for the exam and then you find that you need to um, reschedule, the first reschedule is free. The second reschedule will cost $125. You have um, two years of eligibility from the time of your application. All scheduling, rescheduling, and deferrals will go through your online account um, or through PSI. And this is their phone number. You can retake the exam as many times as you like. There's no limit on how often you can retest. Study resources. We have a content outline. We have sample exam questions. We have practice exams and webinars. So this is the CPH content outline. It's your map to the exam. If it's on the content outline, it's going to be on the exam. So you want to print this out. It's free to you on our website. Print it out and use it as you study the ASPPH CPH study guide. Again, every question on the exam can point back to um, place in the outline. We have sample questions. They're on our website. They're free to you as well. Um, they're mostly just to show you kind of the format um, of the exam. We have practice exams. And we have a online interactive study guide. It's called the ASPPH CPH study guide. And it, there's an overview of each exam content area, definitions and terminology, suggested reading, a 100 question practice test, 250 question practice test, study tips. Um, and the subscription, a uh, one year subscription is $39.99. However, members and employees of the United States Public Health Service, the Commissioned Officers Association, uh, receive the ASPPH CPH study guide for free. So, how do I access the ASPPH CPH study guide? So, if you are a member or an employee of the Commission Officer Association, you would go to this website here, cphstudyguide.aspph.org, and you'd create an account. When you create that account, you want to put in that discount code right there, code discount, and that will give you the zero balance. We have um, webinars on each of the core areas. They are three hours in length. Each um, webinar covers one of the core areas or cross-cutting areas of public health. They're recorded every January, led by expert ASPPH faculty, and they're free to listen to. Uh, you can also listen to all of these study session webinars after you're certified if you find that you're lacking in um, recertification credits. You can count credit for listening to these webinars as a refresher. Um, for anyone interested in the 2017 APHA annual meeting, um, the MBPHE hosts a two-day learning institute every year at APHA's annual meeting. So if you're interested in taking the exam, this is your first time, we recommend you uh, take this two-day learning institute. It'll strengthen your knowledge, boost your testing confidence, and prepare you for the CPH exam. Um, you're in a classroom for two days with 50 other students or individuals, and you would be preparing um, eight hours per day. Um, and then on the third day, if you chose, you would be able to sit for the exam. So you'll have the information fresh in your mind, and you can sit for the exam by paper-based uh, that following Monday at the annual meeting. Stay tuned for more information.
So we do have some discounts, um, like the Commissioned Officers Association, and I just wanted to highlight a few of those. We have these schools and programs here requiring um, that their students sit for the CPH examination in order to graduate as well as these schools and programs have significant CPH participation. We also have organizations with significant CPH participation, and you'll see the Commissioned Officers Association is right there on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So what does this mean to you? This means that you're going to get a discount on the exam plus free study materials. So the standard fee for the exam is 385. Um, for um, schools, programs, or large organizational groups that have about 20 to 30 percent of their um, membership, um, personnel, or, um, or student body will receive a discount of 315 and free study materials for the exam. And last, the last category is $250 for uh, institutions that are requiring the exam for graduation. This takes us to CPH recertification. After you take the exam and you have passed, there is a biannual recertification process. You'll be sent a username and password to your CPH recertification portal where you can enter your credits. Um, you have to obtain 50 CPH recertification credits every two years and pay the $95 maintenance fee. So some recertification activities include taking college courses, attending um, professional events, annual meetings, conferences, faculty, um, teaching, um, creating workshops, attending workshops, seminars, volunteer and leadership, sitting on a board or a committee or volunteering in public health. Um, we also give credit for CPH item writers, or um, if you wanted to review questions for the CPH study guide, um, FAB or CIF accreditation site visitors will give credit for that. Medical residencies, dissertations, online trainings, online modules, podcasts, webinars, anything that's not pertaining to your job that's considered continuing education outside of your area of employment will count for recertification as long as it is related to one of the public health domain areas. So you'll see this is a quick snapshot of our CPH recertification portal. Um, you will have access to your score report to view your scores. You will have access to your profile to update your contact information. There's a user manual inside of the portal that teaches you how to track your credits. We have frequently asked questions. We also have, you'll see under the name Cynthia, there are digital badges. Um, and you'll see a pie chart. So if you look under my recertification total credits, where it says 54, you'll see the dark green says pre-approved, and the light green says other. So the MBPHE accepts um, all continuing education credits that are related to public health, whether they're pre-approved by MBPHE or not, as long as you can make a case for how your activity related to the public health field, it will count for recertification, whether it's approved or not. However, if you want to um, search for approved activities, you can do so in the in the portal. You'll see at the bottom, the bottom ribbon says um, find credits and providers, report activity, request an extension, or and recertification history. So we do have pre-approved organizations that um, offer research uh, that have continuing education opportunities, and um, they just apply with MBPHE, and then we um, put them on our list of pre-approved providers, and that means that any um, event that you attend through those pre-approved providers, um, you can count credit for CPH recertification. And again, you can find credits and providers on our website and in the portal. We've also added digital badges. Um, badges are a visual representation of a skill or achievement. So as you're entering your credits into the system, you'll notice that these little badges will appear if you go above and beyond. So if you um, are attending so many conferences that you're just putting in more credits than 50, 
for um, conferences, you'll see that you can earn a super sender, a superstar attendee badge, or a star presenter badge, or a virtual learner badge, lifelong learner, site, site, site visitor. There's many different things that you can gain um, digital badges for. And you'll see that um, the more colorful they get with the border around the outside, is um, the more credits you enter. We're also going to implement virtual CPH certificates. Um, these will be um, probably introduced in the fall. And each CPH professional will have a unique URL that they can give to employees, that they can link to their LinkedIn, that they can put in their email signature and their resume, their business cards, where you can just click on the link and it will take you to your um, virtual certificate. So employers will be able to verify that, yes, you are certified and you are active. You're not expired. So these are coming soon, so stay tuned. Here's the hard copy certificate, just an example. And after you're certified, you'll be placed on our search for a CPH registry. This is a list that um, employers can go to and um, key in your last name to see your CPH status. Your MBPHE number will be displayed along with your digital badges, and, you'll, and the employer will be able to print the certificate cover letter if he or she wishes. We also have CPH merchandise, hoodies, sweaters, bags, notebooks, um, and you can access all of these on cafepress.com forward slash CPH. Stay connected on social media. We have a Facebook group um, for the Certified in Public Health, and um, we update that weekly with um, announcements on webinars, recertification opportunities, um, if we need to put together a focus group or any kind of nomination. Um, you'll find that on our Facebook group as well as our LinkedIn group. Our LinkedIn group is closed to CPHs, whereas our Facebook group is open to anyone. So if you are a CPH, you'll get an invitation to our LinkedIn group, and that way you can keep um, networking with other CPH professionals and find out more about recertification opportunities in your area. The next computer-based exam is June 1st through June 30th, so be sure to register. And that will conclude my portion of this presentation. And we can go to the officers panel. Annette? Thank you for that, Kate. Um, so first, we will go ahead and go with Lieutenant Commander Huban. I will ask two questions. Uh, the first question will be, what was your experience in taking the exam? And the second question will be, how has the CPH credential benefited you in your profession and the Corps? Lieutenant Commander Hubon. Thank you, Annette. Um, so my name is Tala Hubin. I just found out that my, I, I just looked up the date that I got my CPH. Um, because listening to Kate, we didn't get our results immediately after we finished the exam. So that's an awesome um, addition. So I got my certification in 2013. Um, I had one of the colleges that um, suggested that you do the CPH, but did not require it yet. So GW was kind of like on the fence about it. Um, I think now they promote it more. But I, I did it actually with a friend because a friend was like, we have to do um, a certification to just keep up our education and training. And, and it was actually very worth it. It was a lot harder to do after you graduate from doing your MPH. But I think with all the resources that the Public Health Service and the JOAG and, um, and all the officers that actually hold that certification now, it's a lot easier. Um, for the support and the training. I know we had sessions last year for each of the, the portions for the, I forgot what it was called, the cohort that's not, that doesn't have a public health degree. I forgot what they were called. Um, so, and I know a lot of people took that exam. I, I do appreciate education and training a lot just for my own personal growth. Um, so for me, it's helped me a great deal. 
I know a lot of people don't do certifications for their renewal and recertifying and they're afraid they can't get to it. But the good thing about the CPH is it is every five years and honestly a lot of things that we do for the core actually count to the recertification. Um, anything you do at work also like that's related to public health, if you go to a training or if you do, um, if you present a poster, if you write a news article, all those things actually count. So um, there are a lot of things that I appreciate about the CPH and it has helped me. It's been a conversation starter with employers um, to talk about why I chose to, to go that route and actually a lot of um, my previous employer also held the CPH designation and so she was very supportive of me going after it and thought it was a really important um, way to build my resume and CV for any future um, positions. Annette, did you want me to cover anything else? Oh, I think that's uh, perfect. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. We'll go ahead and move move on to uh, Lieutenant Commander Kazuhiro Okumura. Um, the first question is, what was your experience in taking the exam? And the second question, how has the CPH credential benefited you in your profession and the Corps? Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Kazu Okumura. So uh, I am not an HSO, as uh, it was said in my bio. I'm an environmental health officer. I've been in for about uh, a little over almost eight years now. So my experience taking the test, I am one of those folks uh, during the pilot in, uh, in October 2015 that, was, well, that became eligible through the pilot program to be able to sit for the exam without a CPH. So I took my exam in October 2015. Uh, I had found out about the pilot program uh, during the COA symposium uh, earlier that summer and uh, learned that this, this was going on and the, that uh, this opportunity was there. So I had signed up, uh, reviewed the, uh, the online study guide, which is, which is very helpful. And I know um, I, think I think there are either discounted or free ways to access if you're a COA member. So using that, I was able to, you know, study uh, study for the exam, and you know, was able to pass uh, on my first attempt. So, um, not having, you know, if there are folks out there, you know, listening on the call, if you don't have an MPH, it's ne not necessarily a, you know, I guess a huge disadvantage. A lot of the study guide covers what's on the test, and just if you have general public health work, you know, experience uh, just working in public health, and you shouldn't have any uh, have any problems. Any uh, benefits that it's brought, I think just um, uh, the fact that you have to get continuing education is, is, uh, is, you know, is a good thing for any, any professional. Um, so in addition to this, I have two other public health uh, related credentials, but all of them have uh, continuing education requirements for recertification and having these credentials is just a, it's a good reminder that you, know, you need to keep up your knowledge and not just be uh, you know, focused in where, whatever uh, duty station you're at, and I think as professionals we get uh, kind of hang, get hung up on on uh, doing our day jobs and not really expanding our knowledge. But having you know a credential like this, it just uh, you know forces you to you can remind yourself that you know you have to expand your knowledge, uh, you know, even areas outside your your current day job. So I think that's the one of the biggest benefits that I've seen uh, for me is just a, it's just a good reminder for me to uh, stay on top of things not just in my field, but it, in, it's become more of a, a generalist in, in the area of public health. Thank you so much, well, sir, for, me. Yeah. for that. Um, and I would like to pass the torch now to Kate for the question and answer session. Please. Great. Thanks, Annette. Um, if you have any questions, you can raise the hand icon in the right-hand corner of your screen, and we'll unmute um, each of you one at a time. There's a question, um, are these slides going to be available? And yes, um, after this presentation, we will convert this to a YouTube link as well as um, I will send Annette the PDF version so everyone will have it. And the COA discount is um, COA discount, all one word, for the study guide. Um, however, you'll have that in this 
in this presentation. Okay, if you let your CPH lapse and um, you want to come back and reinstate the certified and public health credential, you wouldn't have to retake the exam. You would simply have to accumulate the credits that you missed and pay for the lapsed cycles. Okay, Matthew, you have a question. I'm going to unmute you. You can go ahead. Matthew, are you there? Okay. Well, his question is, um, where was the exam preparation session being held? And um, we have an exam preparation session held at the 2017 APHA annual meeting in November. And again, you can register either for computer-based exam or paper-based exam. So when you register online, you're going to select either a paper-based exam, which are usually our schools and programs offering the paper-based exam at their campus for their students and alumni. Um, however, if the Commission Officers Association is interested in setting up a paper-based exam, we'd be, we'd be happy to do that for you. Otherwise, you would just key in your zip code into our website to find a testing facility near your house, and then you would schedule the exam, drive to that testing facility, and take the exam um, at a computer-based testing facility with a proctor, and you'd receive your scores after you hit submit on your exam. And the recertification process, yes, you will recertify every two years with 50 CPH recertification credits. And the 2017 annual meeting uh, for APHA is being held in Atlanta this year. Are there any other questions? Oh, here's one. Hi, Christine. I see your hand is raised. I'm going to unmute you. Christine, go ahead. Okay. So we have a question about can nurse practitioners sit for the exam as hybrid, or would it be um, under the five years of experience? So um, it really depends on your experience and your education. Um, the professional work experience is for individuals that have a bachelor's degree in any concentration plus five years at a min minimum of public health work experience deemed by the CDC's 10 essential public health services. Um, so if you have, you know, uh, as a, at a minimum five years of work as a nurse practitioner um, and you have a bachelor's, you could apply that way. Um, otherwise, um, if you have uh, three years as a nurse practitioner plus have taken the core courses at a CEF accredited school or program of public health, then you can apply that way. It really depends on your, um, your history, your background, um, and if you have questions on your eligibility, on your background, you can email us and we will tell you um, which category you should apply for. And um, the cost to attend the 2017 APHA annual meeting, I'm sorry, I don't have that information. However, um, to attend the, the CPH Learning Institute at the APHA annual meeting is $350. Um, 
I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, again, we're going to circulate the slides as well as the YouTube link, and um, we'll also get you the CPH Candidate Handbook and, and some documents that you can start to prepare for the exam with. Um, Annette, I don't see any other questions coming in. Okay. Um, well, I would like to thank um, Kate and the officer panel and General, Generalist Track for their support in making this webinar possible. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please email myself, uh, Annette.Bush at FDA.HHS.gov or uh, to Kate on the, um, e on the email and the presentation that we will send out. Thank you very much. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.